final lecture in this course. In this course, we're going to be covering interactivity and action script. Now, I am going to give you a little warning. This is going to be a longer lecture. We have a lot to cover. Now, as far as interactivity, most of you know that the primary way of user interaction on a web page is through hyperlinks. Um, your navigation is a series of hyperlinks, and this moves people through the site. It can also link them outside of the site to other sites. The primary way for user interaction in Flash, however, is through ActionScript, and this is what we're going to be talking about in this lecture. So what is ActionScript? Well, ActionScript is a really powerful object-oriented programming language that signifies an important step in the evolution of the capabilities of Flash. The motivation driving ActionScript, especially ActionScript 3.0, is to create a language that is ideally suited for you to be able to quickly build rich Internet applications. And these applications have become an essential part of the web experience. With ActionScript 3.0, de developers can achieve excellent productivity and performance with the content and applications that target the Flash player. Now, earlier versions of ActionScript, as ActionScript 1.0 and 2.0, were powerful and flexible, but ActionScript 3.0 really advances the language, and it provides superb performance and easy development to create those highly complex applications. And it also helps you create object-oriented reusable code bases. I'm going to give you some of the specifics on the technical specs for ActionScript. You don't really need to know this, but I want to give you the background just so you have it. So ActionScript is based on something called the ECMA script, and this is an international standardized programming language for scripting. It's the standard for web client-side scripting such as JavaScript and ActionScript. And it is compliant with the language specification for ECMA 3rd edition. And it does contain functionality based on ongoing work that is going to bring out edition 4. So what does this all mean to you? What it means is that because there are standards you have to write the script a specific way in order for it to run correctly. If you don't abide by these standards, your code isn't going to run. A little bit more on the technical background on ActionScript. ActionScript is ex executed by the ActionScript virtual machine, and that's called the AVM, which is built into Flash Player. And AVM1, which was the first version, was used to execute legacy, it's used to execute legacy ActionScript code. In other words, ActionScript 1.0 and 2.0. And AVM1 made it possible for a wide range of interactive media and rich internet applications to be built. But ActionScript 3.0 has introduced a highly optimized AVM, which is AVM2, and it dramatically exceeds the performance of AVM1. So as a result, ActionScript 3.0 code executes up to 10 times faster than legacy ActionScript code. That's huge. I mentioned in an earlier lecture that ActionScript kind of, sort of, not really is like JavaScript. Keep in mind that these languages are not interchangeable, though. You cannot put JavaScript inside a Flash, and you cannot run ActionScript directly inside an HTML page. They are different scripting languages, but there are some similarities. So for those of you who are used to working with JavaScript, you're going to see some similarities. And those similarities include both are scripting languages used for the web. Both have similarities in their syntax. And syntax means the way that you have to write the code in order for it to execute correctly. Both can't run by themselves. You can't just throw up an action script document and expect it to run. It has to run inside of Flash. Same with JavaScript. You can't expect to pick 
set up a JavaScript document and then just have it run by itself. It needs to be executed within HTML. And finally, both are based on object-oriented programming, and that's what I want to talk about now. Before I go into the technical explanations of object-oriented programming, I want to do some visuals. This is my cat, Sydney. I know, you're probably thinking, why is she showing us a picture of her cat? Well, I'm not doing it just because I think he's cute, which he is. There is a point to this, and it's going to make sense in a minute. Now, Sydney is an 18-pound tuxedo cat. Yes, he is a big boy. He's 18 pounds, and he has tuxedo coloring, which means he has black and white. These are characteristics of, of Sid. They're also known as properties. These are things that describe him. Now, Sid likes to do a lot of different things. He loves to play. He really loves to sleep, which is what he's doing right now. He loves to eat. He loves to use the litter box. You'll be happy I don't have a picture of that. But these are all things that he does or functions that he performs. So believe it or not, this all ties into object-oriented programming. Think of Sid as an object. He has characteristics or properties such as his tuxedo coloring. And then he has things that he does, or functions or methods that he performs, such as sleeping. Now, I'm going to talk about functions and methods in a minute. For those familiar with JavaScript, just know that methods are handled a little bit differently in ActionScript than they are in JavaScript. So with object-oriented programming, it's programming with objects. Now, think of it this way. Your program in object-oriented programming is a sentence, and the objects are the nouns, the properties are the adjectives, and the functions are the verbs. So the objects are the things in the program. With object-oriented programming, objects go from more general to more specific. So for example, if I were to say that Sid is a tuxedo cat, and I wanted to write that in the syntax of object-oriented programming, I would write cat period tuxedo. Notice that the, the different things are separated by periods. So it goes from general cat to specific tuxedo, or one of his properties. If you were to write um, some code where a user was going to input their name, one of the fields you could have is person dot first name. So person, who is the object, and first name is something more specific. It's a property, property, which is their first name. I mentioned functions a few slides ago. And functions are blocks of code that carry out specific tasks, and they can be reused in your program. And actually, functions in ActionScript 3.0 are objects themselves. Functions really are an indispensable part of programming because they wrap code into blocks that can be executed only when needed. They also allow code blocks to be reused and edited efficiently without having to copy and paste and edit repeatedly. Without functions, all of the code would be executed in a linear progression from start to finish. And the edits would require changes to every single occurrence of any repeated code, so it really does save you time. I mentioned that functions are really objects. And when you're creating a function, you're creating an object that can be passed as a parameter to another function. And a parameter is data that a function requires to be passed. And also, when you're creating a function, you're creating an object that has properties and methods attached to it. Now, a note about methods, and I mentioned this before about those who know about JavaScript. Methods are treated a little differently. Methods are functions that are part of the class definition. You don't need to know about classes for this course, but the way you can think of a class is that it is a blueprint for an object. 
It fully defines an object, including the data and operations of that object. Classes perform work in your program, and they also contain your program itself. For those who are continuing on in the multimedia scripting class, which is basically the second level of this class, you are going to be using classes. So let's take a look at some code. The code on the screen is a function that will display a message in the output panel in Flash. We'll talk about the trace command on the next slide, but basically this code is going to display the word hello in the output panel if and only if the code runs correctly. The trace command is a very useful command that you can use in Flash. And basically all it is is that it gives you a message in the output panel. And this instruction places any relevant text into the output panel of the Flash interface. So you can use this as a means of getting quick feedback in an example or as a testing or debugging technique when you write script. Because if your script does not execute correctly, you're not going to get that text in the output panel. So you know there's something wrong and you need to go back and fix it. I mentioned that object-oriented programming had a specific syntax. An action script has its own syntax. And syntax means the way in which the code has to be written in order for it to be valid and for it to work correctly. So I want to go over some of the essentials that you need in order to make sure that your code is as valid as possible. The first is the semicolon. And you notice that on the function that we had uh, a couple of slides ago, and I have that same function on the screen now. And a semicolon executes more than one instruction on a single line, and it's also used to indicate the end of a line. You need to use the semicolon at the end of the line, or if you have more than one instruction on a single line, you need to make sure that your semicolon is there. The semicolon basically tells ActionScript, okay, here's what I want you to do, end of that particular thing. Now I'm going to go on to the next thing. The next syntax essential is comments, and it's basically just that. They're comments for just the programmer to see. This is text that is not going to execute. ActionScript sees those two um, slashes and says, okay, this is just something that the programmer should be aware of, but this isn't actually going to show up in the code. And I have this in red here, the word hello. Basically, that is just saying this function, if it works correctly, is going to give me the word hello. Another essential is quote marks. And quote marks denote a string of text. A string is a group of text that ActionScript action will treat as one entity if it's between quote marks. So, for instance, in this code on the screen, the word hello is being treated as one entity. It's going to show the word hello on the screen. It's telling ActionScript, you don't need to convert this into anything else. This is just a string that you're going to take and put on the screen. Another essential is parentheses. And parentheses house an event type. They also group arguments together that apply to an action script statement. And they set an absolute amount that an action will use during execution. There is also curly braces. And what those do is they group related action script statements. Please note, parentheses and curly braces are not interchangeable. Parentheses always show up at the end of a function line. You see, show message, parentheses, parentheses. You always have to have those, even if you don't put anything in them such as on the next line, trace, you have the word hello, that string hello. You have to put those after a function. And you have to make sure they are not the curly braces. The curly braces are simply grouping related action script statements. 
we'll see how those curly braces are really used when we get into some of the more complex things later in this lecture. Action script, as well as other object-oriented programming, deal with different data types, and the data types define a set of values. The most commonly used data types in action script are Boolean, which Boolean only has two values. It's true or false. It's basically testing if something is true, execute this code. If it's not true, either don't execute the code or execute this second set of code. Then there's also the string, which we saw on the last few slides in the function, number, and array. You can also define your own data types by using classes or interfaces to define a custom set of values. All of the values in ActionScript 3.0, whether they are primitive or complex, are also objects. I also want to mention there's another data type that you will be dealing with in your final assignment, and that's the movie clip data type. Check under the examples link in Module 6 for how to position, scale, and rotate movie, movie clips using ActionScript and the movie clip data type. So you have all these different data types. What can you do with them? Well, you can store these data types. And this data can be stored permanently or temporarily. Now, permanently would be with a database. But we're going to talk about the way you can temporarily store data, and that's with variables. Variables have a limited lifetime, so they're good for storing data that doesn't need to be kept. For example, when you buy something online, some companies allow you to choose whether your credit card information is stored. If it is, the information goes into a database. If you choose for it not to be stored, it's stored in a variable long enough to complete the transaction, and then it's removed. Variables are basically symbolic representations of values. What it does is it stores the data, and that data can be altered or varied, which is why it's called a variable. Before we take, about, take a look at how you create a variable, I want to give you some specifics when you are naming your variables. Now, variables are case sensitive, and you cannot put any spaces or dashes. Dashes are not allowed, but underscores are. So keep that in mind. Don't use the dash. You can't start a variable with a number. And there are certain characters that are not allowed. As I said, the dashes are not allowed. The spaces are not allowed. Special characters that you create with the option key are not allowed. There are some tricks that you can use for naming your variables. You can use a capital letter in the middle, which is called camel code. And using camel code can help you see where one word ends and another starts. It just makes it easier to read. You also can use the underscores to separate words. Remember, no dashes. When you're naming your variables, or even when you're naming your functions, it's a good idea to adopt a naming strategy, whether it's using camel code or underscores or abbreviations or any other strategy. You should find one that works for you and stick to it. Decide now which you prefer and start using it. This will help minimize the likelihood of you making mistakes or not being able to figure out what name or what function it's supposed to be. Now let's look at how you can create and assign variables. Now with variables, you have to declare it with the VAR. You absolutely have to use the VAR every time you declare a variable. You can create your own variable name, but you have to put that VAR before it. So now you've, de you've declared my variable, and my variable is a number. So now that you've declared it, you can use it to store data. And you assign a value to a variable using the equal sign which in action script is referred to as an assignment operator. In this, in this case, your variable, which is called my variable, and it's a number, has been assigned the value of 50. 
Remember that semicolon at the end. It ends the statement. With variables, you can store primitive data, which is data that is static. It's not dynamic. It's not, um, you've, de you've declared the value already. Typical primitive data types are characters, numbers, and that includes integers. And then, of course, the Boolean data. We talked about that. That's the true or false. So variables are very useful, but they do have one drawback. Basic variables can only contain one value. If you set a variable to 50, like we did on the last screen, and then you set that same variable to 52 in the following line, the value is just going to be reassigned, and the new value of the variable will be 52. However, there are times when you need more than one variable to contain more than one value. Think of um, a hypothetical set of groceries, including 50 items.